professor, physician, epidemiologist. I am Dr. Sri Banerjee. Hello, I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, core faculty for the College of Health Sciences and Public Policy at Walden University. And in this video, I'm going to be going something called second generation p-values. Now I know some of you might be thinking that um, I have a uh, hard enough time trying to keep straight um, first generation p-values and um, the others might be thinking um, what are p-values to begin with. So um, and I've explained um, a lot about p-values so just um, basically you um, are setting up a value beyond which you're um you know willing to either reject a null hypothesis or fail to reject a null hypothesis so um this is a very important value in um, statistics um specifically in um, the frequentist framework um and this was actually a paper that was written in 2019 but uh, I came across the concept of second generation p-values um, in a uh, place more recently. So um, I wanted to lecture on this because um, this is something that um, is intended to kind of update um, all of the conversation and um, debate that there has been surrounding p-values. Um, so there it were a group of five authors that got together um, uh, in Vanderbilt. Um, and of course, this is all um, uh, uh, this is all kind of combining uh, many different um, perspectives. Um, so the second generation p-value is an extension that formally accounts for scientific relevance by using a composite null hypothesis that captures null and scientifically trivial effects. Um, so you might not be able to capture certain differences or effects in the first generation p-value, but um, these small effects uh, that are technically non-null, um, but practically practically indistinguishable from the null, the second generation approach greatly reduces the likelihood of a of a false discovery. Um, so instead of um, uh, basically instead of um, being able to see um, overlapping um, p-values, uh, uh, excuse me. Um, instead of being able to see um, kind of the point um, uh, uh, point statistic um, as they call it um, so for instance an odds ratio is a point statistic so um, for instance a value of 2.1 instead of seeing this you actually look at um, the confidence intervals um, and see if there's overlap between confidence intervals um, more dominantly um, and also sometimes um, have a range um, that you're willing to accept rather than a um, rigid value. Um, so um, this can be seen as um, providing more flexibility um, in what is seen as acceptable. Um, I, I thought uh, this was an interesting um, uh, way to uh, begin this introduction. Um, uh, by now everyone has seen the little red badges that uh, appear on mobile phone apps and computer icons when the software wants attention. Besides stimulating serotonin production, those little red badges serve an important role. They notify the user when their attention is required. Perhaps not surprisingly, p-values have become the little red badges of applied statistics. They are assumed to indi indicate when the observed data are sufficiently informative to warrant the reader's attention. So the results are, after all, significant. Um, and so it's it basically um, trying to make sure um, that the reader is seeing more than just looking at the p-value. And, and, and so, um, understanding having more ways to understand um uh 
signal versus noise um, is especially um, important and to um, distinguish that. Um, so having a gross indicator of that um, sometimes is awkward um, to try to explain. So like um, everything that's going on, um, effect sizes, um, uh, p-values, um, uh, so it, it just um, understand, it, using p-value to understand effect size, of course, um, doesn't work, and um, it actually confounds um, how effect size um, uh, uh, explains precision. Um, so the uh, article uh, continues to talk about um, the second generation p-value de being developed um, with um, a need in mind um, to improve p-values rather than just discard it because uh, just a couple of years ago they were talking about um, in the statistics conference that there needed to be more than just p-values but now um, this meant keeping familiar characteristics such as bounds of um, 0 and 1 um, while also adding new capabilities, um, such as the ability to indicate when the data support the null hypothesis. Um, by construction, the, uh, the SGPV uh, retains many of the desirable properties of the p-value. Um, so it retains excellent control over error rates, um, operates with low false discovery rates, and is readily interpretable um, by non-statisticians. Um, how does it look? Um, so there's three things that uh, came out of this, uh, three key metrics. Um, a numerical assessment of the strength of evidence in a given body of observations. The probability that the numerical assessment will be misleading in a given setting. And the probability that an observed assessment, one computed from the observed data, um, is mistaken. So um, false, dis false discovery rates in the evidential framework um, is something um, that is also um, assessed. Um, even though they're distinct, um, but they must be clearly defined within the evidential framework. Um, th th there's a lot of important parts to this. Um, I think this um, figure um, illustrates the fact that um, with point null hypothesis, you're dealing with uh, point intervals, while interval null hypothesis is whole intervals and um, looking for differences in that. Um, this table is a good uh, comparison between classical and second generation p-values. Uh, one is a point, one is an interval, um, and um, one is a number between 0 and 1, and um, one is inclusive. So you can kind of go through this table um, and then the um, frequency properties. Um, and um, there's a lot of uh, 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 different applications with SNPs. You can kind of um, go over that. Um, and then um, uh, look at the different remarks. So th that kind of um, concludes all of the different uh, components to the second generation p-value. Um, I encourage you to uh, kind of um, go through the different components of this and um, uh, see if uh, this makes sense. Um, there's also some, uh, uh, try to make sense of this in the context of also uh, Bayesian st statistics. Um, so uh, putting this all together, um, this has provided you with um, an alternative approach to understanding this. Should you shift over to this completely? Um, not necessarily. Um, but I'm uh, presenting to you um, another approach um, to understand p-values. Thank you for listening.